Hello, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Some more iced coffee. Well, my ice melted, but coffee ASMR for you this morning, and it is totally topical. I'm your host, Francie, on the Out of Spec podcast, your go to source for all things electric vehicles. And today we are diving into a topic that has everything to do with coffee and EV charging. So how we charge up and how we charge up our cars. Mercedes-Benz High Power Charging and Starbucks are teaming up to offer what they're calling an elevated EV charging experience to Starbucks locations across the country. Let's break down what this collaboration and partnership means and explore its potential impact with curiosity like we always do here on the Out of Spec podcast. Let's plug in. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Mercedes-Benz High Power Charging and Starbucks have announced a strategic plan to install 400 kilowatt electric vehicle chargers at over 100 Starbucks locations nationwide. Now, the Mercedes-Benz High Power Charging, we've talked about it on the podcast before. I've even spoken and interviewed the CEO, Andrew Cornelia. We have a whole tour of their first EV charging station at their headquarters in Atlanta that Kyle did on the Out of Spec Reviews channel. We have talked about them before. It's not exactly Mercedes, but it's their EV charging network with a billion dollars behind it from the company to install fast charging infrastructure or EV charging infrastructure everywhere for not only Mercedes EV drivers, but everyone. And Mercedes has not been very slow to find partners and get the ball rolling. So like I said, 400 kilowatt electric vehicle chargers at over 100 Starbucks stores nationwide. The first phase targets interstate Five, that corridor, a major route that spans from Canada to Mexico. On paper, this sounds like it'll be pretty convenient for EV drivers who can charge their cars while grabbing a cup of coffee, right? Let's dig a little bit deeper. The convenience factor. This is pretty clear. Combining EV charging with a coffee break, that sounds a bit more pleasant than a charger in the middle of nowhere at the very least. I know that having somewhere to go inside, use the restroom, having AC, somewhere you can hang out that is Different than your car is really important. I just did a road trip where a month ago I took the VinFast VF8 out to Colorado and then I left her there. I brought back the very old Tesla Model 3 back here to Tennessee in a heat wave. And while I could sit in the car with climate on with my dog, that's generally kind of uncomfortable. I want to be able to go in somewhere and somewhere like Starbucks, although I am a huge advocate for pa being a patron to your local coffee shops. And if you go somewhere new, check out the local coffee shops because it shows you the personality of the place that you are. And they're usually pretty fun. I didn't even start drinking coffee until 2020, but I'm glad I did because now I get to enjoy the coffee culture. Uh, but yeah, okay, back to Starbucks. How many Starbucks locations will actually get these high power chargers? There's over 15,000 Starbucks locations in the U.S., some of them are standalone, some of them are not, but equipping 100 stores is just a start. It's just a little bit of that 15,000. So what kind of impact will this have on the average EV driver? Let me know what you think. Let's explore this a bit more. Andrew Cornelia, like I said, is the CEO of the Mercedes-Benz High Power Charging Company and Network, and he says the collaboration between these two leading brands, Mercedes and Starbucks, will uplift the charging experience for all EV drivers. This tends to be an undertone here in the story, as it is in most, is that they want to bring value, make the experience better, more seamless, even enjoyable. He goes on to say, together we seek to infuse delight into this facet of EV ownership through intentional experiences that make drivers genuinely excited to plug in. He says they envision a future where charging your vehicle is as easy as enjoying your favorite Starbucks. I mean... I do like the sound of this, right? Intentionality in where these chargers are going, making the experience that you're genuinely excited to plug in. I mean, <laughs> at out of spec, we are because we love to see the tech, but the general person, yeah, I mean, maybe it should even be neutral. Like I'm just plugging in and then I get to go get a Starbucks, but maybe linking to experiences will bring excitement to people. 
So his vision is certainly exciting. It's positive. But what kind of technology will these chargers use, right? Okay, that's what is really important here. I reached out to Mercedes-Benz for some details. They confirmed that they are future-proofing their network with top-notch technology, including the Alpatronic Hyper 400 chargers. We just covered Alpatronic recently when Mike Duclef from Alpatronic Americas which is a European company coming into America with great hardware, uh, told me all about it, really, and their partnership with Mercedes-Benz to deploy at scale their 400 kilowatt chargers that are these hyperchargers. They're all in one. It's not a cabinet and a dispenser, but smushed all in one at the charging spot. Tons of power, very quiet, nerdy information on the screen. This is, seems good for Alpatronic that you might have Alpatronic, Mercedes-Benz, and Starbucks all together in the same place. Mercedes says that they are considering all hardware, right? They're trying to future-proof their network, so that means they will diversify. They had an original agreement with ChargePoint. That is the hardware that you'll see at lots of their sites for Mercedes, and it's under the ChargePoint network if you're like in plug share. But they're diversifying their hardware. It's best to not to put all your eggs in one basket, I think, when it comes to this. But it'll be interesting to see as time goes on who really starts to come out on top and specifically what hardware starts to come out on top. So 400 kilowatt charging speeds. That's a lot. That means simultaneously with the Alpatronic units that could be split. So technically two people could be getting 200 kilowatts if both vehicles are asking for it. And they support vehicles with a wide range of voltage, including those with an 800 volt architecture for those who care. And both CCS and the North American charging standard, the NAX cables, the Tesla cables, J3400 cables will be available by the end of 2024 at all locations. Sounds promising, but I'm curious to see how this will all play out in practice as we always are. The sustainability angle is definitely something that they're pushing here. Starbucks and Mercedes both emphasize their commitment to reducing carbon emissions. Starbucks and Mercedes are both huge conglomerations that produce and sell things. So their carbon emissions are pretty darn high. Starbucks aims to cut emissions by 50% by 2030, and Mercedes-Benz is pushing for carbon neutrality by 2039. Carbon neutrality means having a balance between emitting carbon and absorbing carbon from the atmosphere in carbon sinks. So I'm pretty sure that if you are just offsetting your emissions, then in one way or another, you are able to say uh, that you're approaching carbon neutrality. And one way to do this is with renewable energy certificates. So you'll see a lot of charging companies say that they're using renewable energy. Well, how does that work? Well, they're taking whatever power they can get from the grid, but they are using renewable energy certificates, RECs. These can be issued when one megawatt hour of electricity is generated and supplied to the grid from an eligible renewable energy resource. These are tradable environmental commodities that can be traded separately from wholesale electricity markets. If you want me to go into more detail about Rex in another podcast, let me know. Would be happy to do so. Installing chargers at Starbucks is definitely a step in the right direction for EV drivers anywhere. Okay, bring it on. More charging infrastructure. But how significant is this step? How will it contribute to broader sustainability goals? How will it contribute to the EV experience? This is what I want to know from y'all. Starbucks is all about convenience. You can come in, get the same drink. Uh, it's all designed the same. It's familiar. That's pretty handy dandy, especially when it comes to charging. You just want to be able to show up somewhere, know exactly what to do, how to plug in your EV charger. What about site selection? Mercedes-Benz shared with me that they are finalizing locations based on factors like proximity to major transit corridors, high EV penetration areas, charging deserts, and customer feedback. They also mentioned that each Starbucks location will have four to 10 charging points depending on the site's characteristics. I think that it does sound that they're being very thoughtful about site selection. We've seen it being thoughtless, careless about site selection, jumping on land grabs, stuff like that can really lead to a pretty crappy situation. So I think this process is intriguing because they're also being very partner forward. Let's consider the broader network. Mercedes-Benz high power charging has made progress with locations in several states and plans to expand further. Currently, they have 13 sites with 100 ports across Texas, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Kentucky. They aim to ramp up construction significantly later this year. It is July 17th, 2024. So how will this collaboration with Starbucks compare to the other charging networks like Tesla Superchargers or Electrify America or EVgo or one day IANA, which is the group of automakers that have created the LLC to put in 30,000 chargers across the North American market by 2030. 
This is again two instances of automakers who are selling the EVs stepping in to say, hey, we've got to play a way bigger part than we've been playing in public EV infrastructure like Tesla did. There was no chicken and egg with Tesla, really. They said, eh, both chicken and the egg at the same time. We're going to sell the EVs and we're going to have the infrastructure smush. And it worked out pretty well for them. Do you think that this is key to a future-proofed, reliable, maintained charging network into the future? Is that the folks that are selling the EVs have to build out the infrastructure? Maybe. That's kind of a trend that I am seeing. And it seems like the automakers agree. Mercedes-Benz partnerships do not stop with Starbucks. They have partnerships with Bucky's. So Bucky's is a well-known convenience store and gas station chain. They will have high power EV chargers there. They already do with Mercedes at some places. They also have Tesla and EA stations at other Bucky's. So that is a fast, reliable charging option at a gas station. So mimicking the gas station experience. These are usually along major highways. They have travelers looking for a quick stop with extensive amenities. If you have the chance to go into a Bucky's, it's just a human experience. Go in. The specific details about the number of chargers or locations, I don't have exactly but I'm looking forward to a map of all of these spots in the future. I have asked for it. Mercedes-Benz also has a partnership with Simon Properties. So they are shopping centers. These offer you know, a good experience for people who want to plug in and go shopping. This is not always good for someone on a road trip, as I have experienced, because sometimes you just want somewhere to chill and hang out and grab a drink instead of just restaurants or retail shops. Although um, I think that it is very useful for people who live in the area and who want to go shopping. But someone on a road trip... I just want right off the highway with a few amenities, um, AC, somewhere I can go and sit, at least in the shade. Mercedes-Benz is not the only automaker that has collaborated with Starbucks. Starbucks partnered with Volvo and ChargePoint to install up to 60 DC fast chargers at 15 Starbucks locations along a 1,300-mile corridor from Denver, Colorado to Seattle, Washington. A coffee route, uh, you might say. So this route passes through pretty iconic locations, uh, mountains, rivers, arches, passes, uh, valleys. These stations are positioned about every 100 miles, which had the goal of making it easy for EV drivers. Anyone really with an EV now can go 100 miles. I mean, way over 100 miles. Don't, don't let me understate that. Uh, to find charging points within their vehicle's range, like I said, everyone should have that range. There seems to be a pretty clear commitment from Mercedes to elevate the charging experience and the Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging network aims to provide not only just faster charging, more charging, but a more enjoyable and integrated experience. Of course, extra integrated if you are a Mercedes driver, I'm sure, but it is open to all EVs. Their partnerships with Bucky's, Simon Properties, and now Starbucks, as well as ChargePoint and Alpatronics show that they are focusing on offering the best hardware that they can find. Uh, amenities, transforming charging stops into pleasant breaks, etc. So I want to know, how do you think this kind of approach will shape the future of EV charging? Did you expect to see this, this much progress from Mercedes right now? It seems to bode well for them and everyone involved because there's a lot of collaboration going on and we know that we need a lot of perspectives to make EV charging infrastructure work. Ultimately, I think that this collaboration is exciting because it shows that we are taking that we are seeing different responsibility fall on the shoulders of automakers than it has before in this market to build out a charging network that is enjoyable, that is easy, that is convenient, that is just what EV drivers need. Let me plug in, let me get going. So what do you think? As we continue to follow the story and see how it unfolds, I will hopefully speak to more representatives from these con from these companies uh, on all of this. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Of course, as always, really love your discussion. How do you think this will change the way that we charge EVs, is it not that big of a deal or is it actually kind of cool? Let me know. Maybe you're a Starbucks lover. That is all for today's episode of the Out of Spec Podcast. Thank you for joining me as we continue to explore all things electric. Until next time, drive safe, stay charged, and maybe have a cup of coffee.